In my career, I've been a software engineer across three companies in Silicon Valley, from a junior engineer at a startup, a mid-level engineer at Pinterest, to a staff engineer at Facebook. This video is for you if you want to understand what it means to be a senior engineer. When I started working after my computer science degree, I had done a lot of problem sets, academic programming, and lab research, but there was still a gap between that experience and the experience of being a software engineer in industry. This is the video I wish I had when I was getting started. Four things I wish I knew about being a tech lead. At the end of the day, it's about impact and relationships. And here's how I think about those. Some engineers introduce themselves through their technology. I'm a Python developer, or I'm a WordPress developer. This might work if you're a junior engineer, but for most senior engineers, you should really avoid tying your identity to a particular framework or language. In my case, I was hired into Facebook as an Android engineer which meant I'd mostly write Java or Kotlin code. However, after working on the team for almost two years, I identified an impactful problem that didn't deal directly with the Android app. The problem I saw was that it took way too long to extract relevant information out of the bug reports that I was receiving every single day. I decided to build an internal tool to automatically pull out the most important information. Building this required a very different set of technologies, Python, JavaScript, and Hack which is a language invented by Facebook as a derivative of PHP. Despite being an Android engineer, I didn't let that stop me from jumping in and using these other technologies. My goal was to solve a problem I had. It didn't matter if that was outside the domain of Android. As a senior or staff engineer, you don't choose your project based on the technology you get to use. Instead, you choose what you work on based on the problem space and the impact you can have. To be clear, for the tool I built, I can almost guarantee that an expert in the language, let's say someone who really knows Python or Hack really well, they would probably have critiques about the code I wrote. However, I can also guarantee that this internal tool still had significant impact on the organization based on the data we collected. It saved hundreds of hours of developer time each month, and various teams were actually able to plug in their own modules on top of it. The impact here was significant enough that a senior director actually awarded me additional equity, which is a way to give an extra equity grant to an engineer who had a big impact. And I think the reason I got that was because I had clarity about the business impact I was trying to have, and I was agnostic to the underlying technology. And this leads to the second aspect about seniority that I wish I had realized earlier in my career. Your job as a software engineer isn't to write code, it's to have business impact. The way you have that impact is often through writing code, but oftentimes it's not. For example, when I built this internal tool to analyze bug reports, I did a lot of legwork to truly understand the problem and context. I talked to the QA team, I talked to the triage team, I talked to the engineering team, and that was time that I didn't spend writing code or even sitting in front of a computer, but I really felt like that was critical to me building the right thing and having impact. Also, keep in mind that there is a cost to writing code. Jeff Atwood has this famous quote, the best code is no code at all. Every new line of code you willingly bring into the world is code that has to be debugged, code that has to be read and understood, and code that has to be supported. More code does not equate to progress. Instead, as a senior engineer, your job is to solve problems. What you'll find is that as a senior engineer, influencing the direction of the team is generally higher leverage than actually coding. That could translate to getting alignment with people on the team, it could mean determining project architecture, or maybe making a decision about what technology to use. However you end up using your time, Remember, there is no such thing as a perfect technology or a perfect architecture. Unless you tell me that your messaging architecture is based on carrier pigeons, as described in RFC 1149, you should just make the decision and stick with it. Take into account, of course, the time constraints and write down the assumptions you're making. But remember, business impact comes from leveraging technology, not debating it. The third area I wish I knew more about when I was starting out was learning how to properly leverage my manager as a senior engineer. When I started my career, my approach to weekly one-on-ones with my manager was to ask for feedback and ask what else I should be working on. As you become more senior, your manager should be more of a partner rather than an authority. You should of course continue to have candid discussions about your growth plan and how you're doing, but you're welcome to, and in some ways you're expected to, share your own observations about how the team can improve. So you might say, hey, I feel like daily standups have been getting a bit too long because of how much the team has grown, and now they're not as useful, should we reduce their frequency? And when you say things like that, you're not only having a positive impact for yourself, but also for the whole team. And that's really what's expected for someone senior. 
you have to be a force multiplier for the whole team. My friend Gerge talks about this in an article he wrote about Silicon Valley engineers. He makes the claim that I agree with that Silicon Valley companies view engineers as creative problem solvers and not factory workers. For senior engineers, you're expected to have a dialogue with your manager about how you're doing and how the team is doing. You're not just churning through units of work. By the way, if you're not happy with the manager you have at your job right now, or you're not even working on a team, I've been building a community designed to offer guidance about advancing your career in tech. Alex and I made the tech career growth community to bring together smart and helpful people who want to get better so we can all help each other out. I'll leave a link in the description and I'd love to have you join us. Finally, the last thing I wish I knew about being a senior engineer is that you have to earn trust. And trust is the most important prerequisite to making a large impact. In my head, there are three different ingredients to building trust. First, you have to follow through on what you say. You have to consistently deliver projects on time with high quality. And of course, things go wrong. Things always go wrong, right? And so when they do, you have to be proactive about communicating what happened, what you're doing to remediate the situation, and how long it'll take to fix. Second, you have to make it easy for people to work with you. That could mean splitting up your code changes so that they're easier to review. So instead of having like a thousand line change, you break it up into eight or nine different smaller code changes. Or it could also mean keeping everyone up to date on the status of your project by having some sort of review check-in. People want to feel like their feedback and their opinions are being heard. And you're not just going rogue and doing whatever you want on your own. Third, whether it's fair or not, there is definitely a likability factor when it comes to being very senior at a company. At the end of the day, seniority and promotion are about perception. You'll only get glowing peer reviews if the people around you not only respect you, but like you. So that means thanking people when they help you, going out of your way to answer questions for your team or for partner teams, that goes a long way in building up that social capital. The reason this is so important is because an employee's trust and influence are the primary assets they have in the knowledge economy. Your technical skills actually become a commodity. Relationships and contextual awareness, which is what you get when you build up trust, are what make engineers so valuable in a tech company. And in fact, this is applicable beyond engineering. The reason why CEOs and VPs get paid so much is because companies place a huge premium on reputation, on network, on prior experience. And that turns out to be much more valuable than raw technical ability. And there are tons of examples of this, ranging from talented engineers at FANG to the, you could look at the compensation of the CEO of public companies. If I truly understood these four concepts when starting out as an engineer, I could have saved myself a lot of anxiety as I became more senior. Obviously, we could go a lot deeper in any one of the topics I talked about. And now that I'm no longer employed, let me know in the comments what you'd like to learn more about. Also, we're bouncing around a few different ideas about how we could achieve our goal of helping millions of engineers become more effective at their job. Whether that's through a membership program, through doing case studies, or through more videos like this. So if you have feedback or ideas, I'd love to hear from you. We're honestly just figuring this out as we go along. If you want to help me out and help out the broader tech career growth community, hit that like button and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.